Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so excited that you took time out of your schedule to join me on tonight. Listen, I am so excited about this day. I am excited about what God has been doing all day today. I am excited about how God is moving. Listen, just to give you a little backdrop of what has happened on today. I had a doctor's appointment today. I knew that I had a copay. I had got a bill in the mail. And I was like, I'll just take care of it when I get to the doctor. So I get to the doctor's appointment and listen, I pay the copay. I pay the bill that is due. I go back to see my doctor. The doctor walks in. He looks at me. We talk, go over a few things. The doctor says to me, listen, this is going to mess y'all up. Why are you even here? I said, excuse me. He said, why are you even here? He said, you only need to come and see me if something is wrong. He said, don't come back again. He said, unless you have a problem. I don't even know why you are here. Listen, God blew my mind with that because if you know my history, if you know my story, there has been one thing after another concerning my health, but God has been faithful over my life, over my health. So I leave the doctor's office. Then I decide, okay, well, let me go get my car inspected because I suppose had been done that. Sitting there getting my car inspected, a lady walks in, listen, and begin to tell me about her ministry. Begin to tell me about how she's ministering to all these women and what they need is Jesus. And she's just trying to get them Jesus, but she don't know how to, she don't know how to give it to them the correct way. So I began to, me and that woman had church right in the car inspection place. Listen, she was in tears. I was giving God praise. I was giving God glory. Get in my car, driving home so I can prepare for tonight. I get a, a phone, my phone ring and it's a doctor's office. Elizabeth, we don't know what happened. Um, it must have been some kind of glitch in our system, but we refunding you everything that you paid today. We don't know what's going on, but you don't owe anything. In fact, you have enough credits to cover you whenever you come in here. You don't have a bill. You don't even have co-pays anymore. Listen, God has been blowing my mind. And so as I was praising God for that, I got home and I began to think on what God had been saying and what God had been doing. And, and I got home and, and I just heard God just spoke this simple word. He says, I am troubling the waters. Listen, he said, I am troubling the waters. We've heard the story in the Bible where the angel troubled the water and, and the people, the first one that get in would be, would be instantly healed of all their sicknesses. But today God told me, he said, tell my sons, tell my daughters that I am troubling the water. I am agitating it. Listen, he says, when I trouble the water, listen to this, it's going to bless you. He says, when I trouble the water, this means that my power is about to move in every area of their lives. Listen, he said, every area of your life, you're going to see my hand. In every area of your life, you're going to see my power. You're going to see the man manifestation of what I am doing, what I am saying. God says, tell them I am troubling the water in this season. And, 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 and the thing that, that, that I loved about this one after God gave me, because you know I love to study. After God gave me that, I went and looked to see what happened in the Bible. And it said the, that the only person, listen, the only person that would get healed after the troubling of the water was the first person to get in, the first people to get in. And it only lasted for a season. God said, not this time. Listen, he said, not this time. He said, tell my sons and my daughters, I am troubling the water. Listen, get in position. It's not to the first one. It's not to the second. He said, in this season, I'm troubling the water for my sons and my daughters. Listen, I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. I just wanted to share that because I've already jumped right in. I wanted to share that because I am excited about what God is doing in this season, in your life, in my life, in the kingdom. I am excited about what God is doing. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for your, your presence that we already feel so strongly, dear God. We thank you for how you are moving, how you are blessing, how you are speaking, how you are, have opened up the portals of heaven to pour out blessings upon your people. We thank you for how you have troubled the water in this season, dear God. I thank you for every listener. I thank you for everyone that will share this. I thank you for everyone that will sow into this word, dear God. 
I ask right now that you give them a hundredfold return on every seed sown. That God bless them in ways that they have not seen you bless before. God, we are in a season of double. God, I decree and declare double over every listener, double in every area, double in their finances, double in their health. God, do it in the name of Jesus. We know that you can. We know that you will. We give you glory and praise for what you're going to do and say on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I am excited about this word on tonight. I shared a little bit of it. And if you have not shared this live, please go ahead and share. Go ahead and tag someone. This is about the kingdom. This is about getting God's word out to the kingdom. So go ahead and share this if you would, please. Listen, so on tonight, I had first labeled it the test. Then I went back. I said, no, it's not the test. It's the temptation. So I, I on my notes, I changed the heading is not the test. The, the heading is the, the topic is the temptation. Listen, God began to give me this word on yesterday. He said, tell my sons and my daughters that after every mountaintop experience, listen, it's going to bless y'all. After every mountaintop experience, after every victory, after every, every everything you go through, every, every height, high height that you go in God, there would be a temptation. Listen, temptation is going to come. Watch this. God says, don't get so caught up in celebrating your victory. Listen, that you get sidetracked when the temptation comes. Don't get so caught up in celebrating that you miss what, what, what is happening next in your life. Listen, don't get so. Oh, here we go. Don't get so caught up on your victories on last year that you forget what God is doing in 2022. Listen, listen, because we must understand that after every victory, Temptation will come. Let, let's look at this in, in the word of God. Matthew 4 verses 1 through 11. Matthew 4 verses 1 through 11. Next, and this is the message Bible. Next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the spirit for the test. Next, Jesus, listen. Next, Jesus was taken into the wild by the spirit for the test. The devil was ready to get it. Jesus prepared for the test. Listen, Jesus prepared for the test by fasting 40 days and 40 nights that left him of course in a state of extreme hunger which the devil took advantage of in the first test listen since you are god's son speak the word that will turn these stones into loaves of bread jesus answered him by quoting jesus quoted the word listen jesus answered him by quoting deuteronomy it takes more than bread to stay alive man should not live by bread alone it takes a steady stream of the words from God's mouth. Man shall not live by, by bread alone, by, by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Listen, listen to what Jesus said. Listen, I love this. Jesus answered, it takes a steady stream, a steady stream of God's, of, of words from God's mouth. This is how important the word of God is. Listen, for the second test, the devil took him to the holy city. He sat him on top of the temple and said, since you are God's son, jump. The devil goaded him by quoting Psalms 91. Listen, he has placed you in care of angels. They will catch you so that you won't so much as stub your toe on a stone. Jesus countered with another citation from Deuteronomy. Jesus giving him the word again. Watch this. Jesus giving him the word again. Don't you dare test the Lord your God. For the third test, this is the third test. The devil took him to the peak of a huge mountain. He gestured, explaining, pointing out all the earth's kingdom, how glorious they all were. Then he said, they're yours, lock, stone, and barrel. Just go down on your knees and worship me, and they're yours. Jesus refused him. He said, beat it, Satan, or get behind me, Satan. Listen, he backed his rebuke with the third quotation from Deuteronomy. He quoted the word every time the enemy come. I hope y'all catching this. He said, Worship the Lord your God and only him. Serve him with absolute single-heartedness. The test was over. Who oh God, listen. The test was over, over. The devil left and in his place, angels. Angels came and took care of Jesus. Oh my God, I got to work this text. Let's listen. You have to understand what just happened. It's this, this, whole, this whole setup is a, is a contrast between the glory following Jesus' baptism and the challenge to be tempted by the devil. Listen, 
Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist. Listen, he came out of the water and, and, uh, and God himself spoke and said, this is my son. Listen, this is my son chosen marked by love who I delight in. He was pronounced who he was. Listen, the height of his ministry, as soon as that happened, I told you after every victim of temptation is coming, as soon as that happened, here comes Satan. Watch this. Let's listen, to how, listen to how they broke this down. The cool, Then the cool of the waters of the Jordan, now he's in the wilderness. Listen. The huge crowds, now he's in solitude and silence. The spirit rests on him like a dove, now the spirit driving him into the wilderness. My God, listen. Then the voice of, of his father calling him beloved son. Now the hiss of Satan in his ear. The tempter. Listen. listen. Oh God. First, then he's anointed. Now he's attacked. Listen. Then the water baptism. Now the fire of temptation. First, the heavens open. Now hell is open. Listen. I told y'all. After every temp after every victory, temptation will come. Watch this. The, the, the thing we have to understand is that Jesus did not need to be tempted in order for him to grow. Watch this. Jesus was tempted for one for, for, for two purposes. He was tempted so that he could identify with us. Number one. Number one. So he, he so so we could never say Jesus don't know what it means to be tempted. He was tempted by Satan himself. We just a lot of us we just entertaining low low level demons. Number one, he was tempted because to identify with us. Number two, he was he was tempted to demonstrate his holiness and his sinless character. Oh, oh God, listen, here we go. Listen, listen, so you have to understand, you have to understand, because I got notes everywhere. I got the iPad and my notebook. Listen, temptation is intentional enticement of a person by some type of bait. Listen, that's what temptation is. It is rooted in self-gratifying to, dis to disobey God's revealed word. That's what temptation is. Watch this. Now, now you have to understand. Matthew 4 proves that you can have victory. That this is what Jesus did. He proved that you can have victory over temptation, even though Adam and Eve didn't. Listen, listen, he was the second Adam. What they couldn't do, he came and he did. They couldn't overcome, the, they couldn't overcome Satan. And they, they fell for Satan's plot in the garden. So when Satan came back again to try to tempt Jesus, it didn't work. So Jesus was showing us that you can have victory over temptation. Watch this. Temptation demonstrates that believers can have victory over temptation. When your inner man, listen, listen, when your inner man is strengthened, you can overcome temptation. What did Jesus do before he was tempted? He fasted 40 days. This is why it is very important. People always ask, why are you always fasting? Why are you always fasting? This is why it's very important. Fasting strengthens your inner man. Watch this. Here we go. The difference between and this is why this is why I kept playing with the title between being tempted and tested. Tempted. So this is the, the difference because I, I had to look this up to make sure that I was hearing God right. The difference in being tested and being tempted. God tests. Satan tempts. Watch this. God tests you, but Satan tempts you. Watch this because God cannot tempt you because they, in, in order to tempt you means I'm enticing you with something that would disobey God. Oh God, I love you. So God is not going to cause you to sin against him. Listen, when God tests us, it's for reasons to take us higher, to show us who we are, or to show us where we need to go. A test like he tested Job. He tested Peter. He tests different ones and he tests you and me so that we can understand where we are in him, where we need to go in him, or when he needs to get something to us, we go through tests. Listen, watch this. But Satan's objective, here we go. Satan's objective is to tempt you so you will fall. Listen, why do you think he come? Oh, God, I love you. Why do you think that he comes after a victory? Listen, why does Satan come to tempt after a victory? Because we we, we take so long to celebrate. We, we, we so caught up in the celebration. Oh, I, did you see what God did? I did this. We did this. And we so celebrating. We forgetting that the tempter is roaming to and fro seeking whom he may devour and when you are celebrating your guard is down you're not really paying a lot of attention you just in the moment and while you're in the moment satan comes to tempt listen but jesus gave us a way out he said you can have victory over temptation when your inner man is strengthened that is why fasting and praying is very important listen watch let me get back let me get back 
Okay, so, 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 tempted by the devil, temptation will come. It's not an if, it's not a maybe, it will come. It's going to come. Listen, yet Jesus' temptation was more severe. Like I said earlier, Jesus was tempted. Listen, he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Therefore, he was near the point of starvation. That is why Satan came. The first thing he said, turn these stones into bread because I know you're hungry. Listen, and every time he came, Jesus came back at him with the word of God. Listen, he was tempted directly by Satan himself. Not no lower level demons, not no imps. He was tempted by Satan himself. Listen, some of us have to, have to be honest and admit You've never really been tempted by Satan. Listen, do you know what it's like? I can only give my testimony. Do you know what it's like to literally hear him talking to you? Do you know what it's like him telling you what you can do to get out of a situation? And listen, remember, God causes tests. Listen, oh God, I love you. I love you. God will cause a test. Oh God, here we go. God will cause a test and call and drive you. Listen. Remember, the spirit drove, drove Jesus into the wilderness. God would allow a test to drive you into a place, into a situation. Once you get there, Satan is always going to come and give you a way out. This is how you can get out of this test. This is how you, can, you, you won't have to go through that if you just go this way, if you just go that way. That is what Satan does. He is a tempter. And listen, whenever he's tempting you, I don't know who this is for, but whenever he is tempting you, it is not tempting you to do the right thing. Oh God, who am I talking to? It is not tempting you to do the right thing. And I'm going to get into how sneaky and conniving he is later. Watch this, watch this. So Jesus had fasted. So he was near, he was near starvation. Jesus' severe physical condition after su such a long fast was enough room right there for Satan to get in and tempt him with food. Don't be so surprised when the enemy shows up after you have fasted. Some of us, let, 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 let me, let me, let me give you some wisdom. Some of us get to this place where we feel like I fasted, I prayed, I'm there now. To God be the glory. And yes, you are, you may be there. You may be feeling your highest of heights. Do you think Satan not coming? He waiting for you to get done with your fast. He done tried you all through the fast. You made it. Now that you're on the other side, he's still coming. Just because you fast don't mean he's not going to try you. He's just going to try even harder. Listen, listen. So you have to be prepared. Watch this. So don't be surprised when he showed up. Satan is always looking for an area of weakness. Whenever he finds that little area, he's going all the way in. Give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Every time. Watch this. Our Savior was tempted all that 40 days space. So the whole 40 days he was tempted. Listen, the whole 40 days he was tempted. But these three worst assaults were, listen, listen. Satan saved the best for last. He tempted him the whole 40. But when it got all the way to the end, the last three temptations were his greatest. Listen, because Satan himself showed up then. He said he tempted him with bread. He tempted him with, with the wealth. He tempted him with all with three different things. Listen, listen. This wasn't self-denial just for the sake of self-denial. This was a period of forced dependence on God the Father. Listen, at this time, Jesus himself is depending on his Father. Listen, well, that's why the Bible says when, when you are tempted, when you are tempted, there is always a way of escape. God is your way of escape. His word is your way of escape. There is always a way out. And this is what Jesus is showing us in this text. Listen, the first temptation was an appeal to his flesh. Listen, the first temptation was appeal to the lust of the flesh. When the tempter came, notice that Matthew writes, when the tempter came. In our lives, it's not, like I said earlier, it is not a question of if. It is when he coming, because he's definitely coming. We will face temptation until we go to glory. Until you leave this earth, you're going to be tempted. If, if somebody stand and tell you, I'm not being tempted. I'm not tempted. They are lying. The Bible says you will be tempted until you leave this earth. Why? Because Satan is always going to be on his job. He is not going to leave any of us alone. Listen, listen, let's look at the circumstance that preceded the temptation of Jesus. 
he was in an especially devout frame of mind before his temptation. Listen, he was engaged in the act of public obedience to his father, to his father's will before his temptation. So th 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 this right here is going to do away with people saying, oh, you must have been doing something wrong for the enemy be bothering you like that. No, no, no. L -l listen, listen, because people always say you must have done something to deserve that. No, no, no. Listen. He was in a specially devout frame of mind. He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights before the temptation. He was engaged in an act of public obedience to his father's will before he was tempted. He was in exceedingly humble frame of mind before he was tempted. He was blessed by the heavenly, by, by heavenly assurance of his sonship. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. All that happened before he was tempted. Listen, he was filled with the Holy Spirit before his temptation he was completely separated from the world before his temptation although jesus had everything in the proper place everything was in the proper order he was still tempted who am i talking to tonight that think you ain't never gonna be tempted if i get tipped that mean i must be doing something wrong if i'm getting tempted i must be off track no you will be tempted listen listen this is good to me but 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 First Corinthians 10, 13, there is no temptation that is common to man that God will not give you a way of escape. Listen, for every temptation, there is a way of escape. Listen, why? How do I know? Because because Jesus already did it. He already won the victory over temptation, showing us that you can have the victory. And it was one thing that he kept doing every time Satan came. He kept saying he kept quoting the word of God. The word of God, the word of God, the word of God. What is our way out of temptation? The word of God. Who am I talking to tonight? Listen, listen. If you listen, then Satan says, Satan says, if you are the son of God, the question asked by Satan, if you are the son of God, Satan know exactly who he is. Satan did not question Jesus' deity. He challenged him to prove who you are. Oh God, prove who you are. Many of us have felt fell for that trap. You know you 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 a prophet, honey. You better show them. Listen, you 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 the man of God. You better show them. You the woman of God. You better show them. that's Satan's trap. You don't have to prove. Who am I talking to tonight? You don't have to prove who you are in God to nobody. Even Jesus did it here. Satan told him, "If you are the Son of God, do this, and them angels they're gonna come and get you." So he wanted he wanted Jesus. To prove himself jesus said no 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 i ain't got to do that watch this jesus didn't listen listen satan bids the lord to prove his sonship by catering for himself and yet that would have been the surest way to prove that he was not the son of god Woo! listen let, let, let me say it one more time satan tells the lord prove your sonship by catering to him for himself and yet that would have been the surest way to prove that he was not the son of god Oh, God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, listen. Jesus didn't silently disagree with Satan. This, this is important. Jesus didn't silently disagree with Satan. He answered him and he answered him from the word of God. When Jesus quoted Deuteronomy 8 and 3, Jesus shows that every word, listen, every word that proceeds from the mouth of God should be more precious than food itself. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, what Satan suggests made sense. Why starve yourself to, this is what Satan suggested. Why starve yourself to death? But it was written, but it, but what is written makes even more sense. Listen, by relying on the power of the truth of God's word, Jesus was willing to fight this battle as a man. He could have easily rebuked Satan into another galaxy. <laughs> he could have, he could have rebuked him into literally another galaxy, but resisted him in a way that that we can imitate and identify with. Everything that Jesus did, when, when you're reading the Bible, everything he did was for a purpose. Like, what would it say? He could have rebuked him into a whole nother galaxy, but he didn't do this because I'm going to show my, my children a way to handle this. So what did he do? He gave him the word. Jesus is teaching us how to use the word to combat Satan. Fight spirit with spirit, not with flesh. Who, who is that for? Fight spirit with spirit, not with flesh. He fought him with the word. Watch this. 
Jesus used scripture to battle Satan's temptation, not some elaborate and powerful show off of his power and who he is. He didn't do that. He used the word of God. Listen, 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 listen. I love this. I love this. He drew on no special resources unavailable to us. Listen, he, did, he didn't do something that he knew we would never be able to do. He said, I'm going to I'm going to deal with this in a way so that my sons and my daughters would know how to deal with it when it comes. I'm going to show them how to use the word to get out of any temptation that come their way. Watch this. He could have stood against Satan with the display of his own glory. He could have stood against Satan with logic and reason. Instead, Jesus used the word of God. That was his weapon. The word of God as a weapon against Satan and temptation. Listen, verses five through seven. The second temptation, an appeal to the pride of life. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Satan tempted Jesus to force Jesus to force the father into super into a supernatural event. Listen, Satan was trying to get Jesus. If you throw yourself down, God himself going to show up. Listen to how crafty Satan is. If you do this, your daddy going to show up. If you do this, he's going to send a legion of angels to catch you. Go on and do it. Let me see. Let me see. This is listen, listen to this. This is how this is how sneaky Satan is. So he, he was trying to get um Jesus, he was trying to force the God into a supernatural event. Satan appealed to the desire within every man to sense approval from their father. Woo! He was trying to get Jesus to say, let your daddy approve you. Let your daddy come to the rescue. Let your daddy save you. Listen, listen, he was trying to do this. And listen, so, so, so what happened? Satan appealed to the desire within every man to sense approval from God and to have that approval publicly this is what we get in trouble publicly demonstrated god oh god i want you to show them who i am to you I, I want them to see who i am to you i want see we get into trouble and then that is a that is a trick of the enemy watch this see set him on a pinnacle of the temple and listen the drop from this pinnacle was 200 feet down just throw yourself off your father gonna come and rescue you a leap from there and the appearance of the promised angelic protection would be a, a remarkable spectacle. Something powerful to see. And Satan said, if you do it, everybody going to see it. Go on and do it. And listen, listen, Jesus, Jesus comes back and says, for it is written. The devil can use this phrase also. Watch this. We can trust that the devil has memorized the Bible himself. Watch this. And is an expert at quoting it out of context to confuse and defeat those he tempts. This is why, listen, listen, listen. This is why it is so important that you study the word for yourself, that you study the word. Let his word be your meat day and night. Let, let his word be, be you, you, you devour it. This is why I get so excited about the word of God because it is my blueprint. It is my map. It is my lifeline. Listen, because why am I saying it? Why is this so important? Because Satan himself knows the Bible. And what does he do? He send people, he send people in, in our day and time, he send people to twist the word and to give it to you out of context. This is why I I'm teaching my mentees how to actually study. They give me scripture and I say, okay, so we got to go back and we got to look at what's the background. Why was they saying it? What was happening? We can't just read just that one scripture. I didn't just read that whole chapter. And you may have to bag up a couple of chapters to see what was happening. You got to understand the timings, what was going on. You got to make sure that you are rightly, oh God, here we go, dividing the word. Because listen, right here, Satan was quoting the word. Listen, listen. Here the devil quoted Psalms 91, 11 through 12. And he took it out of his context. Listen, go ahead, Jesus. If you do this, the Bible promises angels will rescue you and it will be a spectacular self-promotion. Satan borrowed, he, Satan tried to do what God, what, what Jesus was doing because Jesus kept giving him the word. Satan said, okay, I'm gonna give it back to you then. For those of us that know the word, we quote the word, we live the word, we eat the word. Do you not think Satan gonna try that same thing against you? Listen, listen, watch this. Listen, so Satan borrowed what the Lord was doing, what Jesus was doing. It is written. But he did not use the word lawfully. The text was falsely quoted because the devil left out the words to keep you in all your ways. He didn't see. He, he, he gave him the word, but he didn't give him all of it. He gave him the word, but he gave it out of context. That's why I said you got to know this word for yourself. 
to test God in this way was not of Jesus way. It was not of the way of the Savior or the Messiah. God had never promised. Listen, God had never promised nor ever given any protection of angels in a sinful and forbidding way. Oh, God, listen, listen, look what did he say? God had never promised nor ever given any protection of angels in sinful and forbidden ways. Never did that. Watch this. But Jesus understood that Satan was twisting this passage. Listen, because Jesus is not the word. So he knew that he knew that Satan was twisting it. Jesus knew how to rightly divide the word of truth according to 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Sadly, he Satan didn't understand that Jesus know what you're doing. He know you're twisting the word. And what is what is God saying tonight? This is what my sons and my daughters have to be careful of. Make sure you are rightly divided. Make sure when people say you, God said, God said, is it lining up with the word? You want a prophetic word? Open the Bible. It'll prophesy to you all night long. Listen, listen, because what, what Jesus did, even in all of this tempting, he was giving Satan the word. Listen, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus replied after Satan gave him that twisted scripture of Psalms 91. Jesus said, J Jesus said, let me see. I lost my place. I got so caught up in it. So he said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus replied with scripture, but he applied it correctly. He knew that attempting to force or manipulate God the Father into such a demonstration would be tempting him. Listen, and that's what Satan was trying to do. Let, go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do this. And, and, and the angel's going to come. It's going to be a beautiful spectacle, um, spectacle of what, what God can do in his power. So why are you tempting God? God ain't got nothing to prove right here. Listen, listen. This warns us against demanding, listen, this warns us against demanding something spectacular from God to prove his love or concern for us. Woo! I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. This warns us against demanding something spectacular from God to prove his love or his concern for us. Listen, because he has already given the ultimate dish demonstration of his love for us on the cross. But a lot of times we want God to do something spectacular, something wonderful so we can show you I'm, I'm his favorite. I'm his girl. That's why he did that. That's why he did that because I'm his girl. No, no, no. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. And when, and when you start getting over into that, you, you getting over into tempting him. Woo, who am I talking to tonight? Listen, the, the third temptation, listen, the third temptation verses eight through 10 was an appeal to the lust of the eyes. All these things I would give you. Listen, Satan says, if you fall down, if you worship me, if you, you see all this, this kingdom, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. Listen, essentially the vision invited Jesus to take a shortcut around the cross. Woo, listen, listen, Satan was giving Jesus when he said, you see all these kingdoms, I'm going to give it to you. If you bow down and you worship me, remember. If Jesus would have did that, it would never have been no point. He would have never went to the cross. Which means there never been no forgiveness for sin. It would never been none of this that we sitting here talking about now. It would have been none of that. That is Satan's ultimate goal. Listen, he wanted Jesus to bypass the cross. Listen, that's why I said these was the last, the last three of the 40-day fast. These was the, the last three were the greatest temptations because Satan himself showed up on the scene. Listen, he says, if you just bow down and worship me, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world and their glory will be back in Satan's domain. Listen, listen. And Satan offers them to Jesus if he will only fall down and worship him. All Jesus would have to do is give Satan what he's been longing for since he fell. Why was he kicked out? He got jealous of the worship because they were worshiping God and not him. So he was kicked out. And what does he still want? Worship. If you fall down, Jesus, and you worship me, I give you everything. Listen, listen. This is a revealing insight into Satan's heart. Listen to this. This is a, this is a revealing insight into Satan's heart. Worship and recognition. Ooh, who am I talking to tonight? If he can get you to worship him, to worship what he got to offer, to give him glory. Listen, to give him glory, that is his ultimate goal. If I can get them two things out of my got them. Listen, I, and I'm going to tell you when, when it, the worship and the recognition, listen, 
Satan's hard worship and recognition recognition are far more precious to him than the possessions of the kingdom of the world and their glory. To serve him, listen, to serve him is to worship him. You must remember, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. That's Matthew 6 and 24. You can't serve God and Satan. And to serve him is to worship him. It's, it's a hard thing. So where's your heart at? I'm asking a question tonight. Where's your heart at? Either you, he said, because his, what Satan wants is he wants you to serve him. And he wants you to recognize him. A lot of times, a lot of times we give Satan, and I was just having this conversation with my mother the other night. I said, when people get on Facebook, and I'm just going to say Facebook, but any social media, and you're talking about your problems, 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 your problems you are actually giving Satan glory. You are glorifying Satan. Listen, when you're going on there, and, and it's one thing because I, I, I just, this is my personal opinion. This ain't written in stone nowhere, but this is my personal opinion because it's what worked for me. When I was going through all the times I've been going through, I may post, I constantly make myself post scriptures that is uplifting me, scriptures that is holding me up, scriptures that's keeping me running, scriptures that, that's wiping the tears from my eyes. That is what I post. Not help me, please do this. Look at me. I look so sad. I, I'm going through and I'm posting about it and I'm talking. About, no, when I do post about it in the end of that post, you're going to see God get the glory. Listen, you got you got to be strategic because Satan is crafty. And, and by you once being the person that was giving God all the glory, giving God all the praise, giving God all that he deserves. And now you back to woe is me. You got people looking at that saying, I told you. And listen, wouldn't it be a tragedy? Oh God, here we go. Wouldn't it be a tragedy for you to be that person that was always giving God glory, always singing God's praises. And now all of a sudden you woe is me. I'm going through, help me, do this, do this. And people say, well, you know what? I almost would have believed this God she talking about, but look at her now. I ain't get, I ain't giving, I ain't serving no God like that. If you are going through, I'm gonna say this: go through in private. If you want to post on Facebook, post the victories, post what God is doing, post the triumphs. Listen, it, and, I, and I'm not saying if somebody died, you saying keeping my family at prayer. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the woe is me, because Satan loved that. Why? Because you're giving him glory now. And, and the people that you could have almost went to Christ are not coming because they said, well, oh, she was doing all that two weeks ago. Now look at her. I mean, or, or, or you could do it this way. And, and this is how I love to do it. I love to come on after the fact. Lord, y'all won't believe what God did. I was going through. I didn't post it. But God is a deliverer. God is a way maker. God. Is, and when you come at it like that, it, it, it encourages people to keep running. Not the woe is me. Listen, I hope that helps somebody because that would just. That was just out, out there. God just dropped that on me. Listen, listen. So no one can serve two masters. You cannot say you serving God and giving Satan glory at the same time. Listen, you cannot serve two masters. Either you're, you're going to serve one or the other. Listen, so Jesus replied with scripture again after Satan told him to bow down and worship. Jesus replied with scripture again and commanded the devil to leave in the same way we should. Listen, when Satan tempts you, you open your mouth. Listen, open your mouth and give him the word of God and tell him to get in his rightful place, which is under your feet. Get behind me, Satan. Listen, listen. It worked for Jesus, so it's going to work for us. The word of God has power in it to squash every temptation Satan will send. This is the whole point in these scriptures in Matthew. God, Jesus was showing us this is a, it's a way of escape. All you need is my word. My word will get you out every time, but you got to apply it. Now, sometimes you got to understand some of us, some of us don't always want a way out. We want to fall right in it. We want to fall right in it and then come at God. I'm sorry. God, you are habitually sinning. Listen, it is a difference to make a mistake and then to be a habitual sinner. I'm just saying, listen, listen. So the devil leaves and listen, this is what I love. 
as soon as as soon as Jesus gave him the word, get behind me, Satan. Satan leaves and get who guess who shows up immediately? The angels. Listen. Then the devil left him, which means that Jesus won. He got the victory. Listen. He won because he recognized Satan's mode of attack, lies and deception. Primarily Satan is a deceiver, a dece and deception is his only tool. You got to remember you got to remember that. Satan is a deceiver. The Bible says he's the father of lies. There is no truth in him. So every time you hear something negative, that is Satan talking. That's not God. Listen, listen, listen. So, so Jesus, after Jesus, Jesus won because he had overcome the temptation, knowing that Satan's only tool was deception. But deception is extremely effective at leading you into sin. Deception will lead you into sin. Watch this. And causing you to live a life of fear and unbelief. Satan will whisper something in your ear, deceptive. You believe it. And now you're living in fear. Listen, off of a lie that he told you. John 8 and 44 says, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. Woo! Listen, when he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Nothing truthful is going to come from Satan. Nothing. Every time he opened his mouth, he lying. Listen, watch this. Jesus showed the only effective counter to deception. God's truth, not man's wisdom. Listen, how do you counteract deception with the, with the word of God? God's truth. First, we must see temptation for what it is. It is a lie. Temptation is a lie. It is a trick from the enemy to try to get you to go contrary to what God is already telling you to do. Then we must combat it with that temptation with the word of God. Then we must always build yourself up with the truth. Listen, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of, okay, here we go. When the enemy comes in like the flood, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. What is the standard? The standard is the word. The word is your weapon. I'm telling you tonight, listen. This is why I love to teach it. I love to study it. I love to break it down. My, my, my mentees, they'll put something in the chat. The visionaries will put something in the chat. And it'll be, look at this scripture. I said, and I'm look like a kid in candy. So I'm about to break this down for them. Listen, your word is your, the word of God is your weapon. It is your way to combat, combat Satan every time. But what I love about this, listen, when he combat, when he won, when the victory was won, when Jesus overcame the temptation, Angels immediately came to his aid. Immediately. What is God saying tonight? When my sons and my daughters learn that Satan is a liar, when they understand that, when you hear that negativity coming in your ear, it's a lie. What are you going to combat it with? I'm going to quote the word of God. If you even have to Google it right quick. Google it, look it up, write it down, sticky notes, whatever. You got to combat it. You can't just sit there in silence. What I love about this text is, that Jesus opened his mouth every time. And he quoted Old Testament scripture. He was quoting the word of God. Listen, what is God saying tonight? When the enemy comes in like a flood, open up your mouth and give back the word of God. Listen, because temptation will come. Temptation will come, but you can overcome it with the word of God. Listen, and I'm gonna close with this. Temptation will always come. These are my points. I got six points. Temptation will always come after every victory. Temptation will come after every victory. Listen, listen, listen. Temptation will come after every victory. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it. Watch this. Don't celebrate the victory too long. Because when you get into the celebrating so long, you let your guard down. God bless you for your seed. You let your guard down. Watch this. You can overcome temptation. Listen, you can overcome temptation with the word of God. Understand point four. Satan is a deceiver and he is the father of lies. Anything he tells you, it is a lie. It is a lie. Understand this. And you got to combat that with the word of God. Listen, you overcome it again. I said this before. You overcome Satan's deception with the word. And last point. 
God will always send angelic help. God will always send his angels. You, you, you do know that you have angels that are assigned to you, waiting God to assist you. And God will send them when you need them most. Listen, I am, I, I, I am excited about this word. I am excited about what God is going to do. But on tonight, God is saying he do not want you to, to feel like you have to bow down to this temptation. Because it's running rampant. We see suicide everywhere. It is running rampant. At the root of suicide, if, if you if you were paying attention, what did Satan tell Jesus to do? Throw yourself 200 feet down. That means kill yourself. Throw yourself 200 feet down and the angels will come. God, God your daddy not going to let you even hit your foot. Listen, I was talking to somebody about suicide this week because we, we can't prejudge people. We don't know what's in their mind. All we can do as believers is pray and bind that spirit. Listen, because you don't know who is on. You don't know when it's attacking them. You can pray, God, if it's somebody near me, show me. God, give me the right words to say. God, let me let me go to the aid. God, give me something I can say or do to, to, to stop that, to bind that, 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 um, that spirit off of their lives. Listen, on tonight, you have to understand, whatever temptation comes, there is always a way of escape. There is always a way out. Our father is always waiting to help us. He has given us this word. He says, use it. He said, tell my sons and daughters, temptation will come. It's going to come until they leave this earth. It's going to come after every victory. But I have given them the tools to overcome it. Use the tools that you have, my God. Use the tools that you have. And that is the word of God. Listen, I love you. God bless you. If you want to sow into this word, the information is on the bottom of the screen. Listen. Miracle signs and wonders follow this ministry. Miracle signs and wonders follow this ministry. And I am so excited. March 4th, March 4th is our next live in person sold out. Listen, God has already given me some of a word to share. I'm going to have some of my team to share their testimony because you got to hear this. I said, I'm not telling nothing else that God has done for the people that follow this ministry. I want you to hear it from them. And next sold out, I'm going to, I'm, it's going to be packed. The mic going to be hot. That's all I can say. The mic going to be hot. So my, those that have been sending me all these testimonies, get ready. Listen, I promise you, I, I, I may let you know before time, but on March 4th, listen, God gave me a word. Um, and it's because he was dealing with me about this word. You are the sacrifice. Listen, you are the sacrifice. And then he gave me a part two to it tied to the altar. So I'm excited about that word. Listen, I am excited to share God's word with you. If you ever need prayer, thank you for those of you that are already sowing. Thank you for those of you that are sending your tithes and offering. God bless you. Listen, if you ever need prayer, it's not predicated on a seed. If you need prayer, you know how to inbox me. Reach out to me. I will pray for anyone. You're not buying a prophecy. You're not buying a, 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 a anything from me. You're not buying prayer. I will pray for any and everybody. That's what I am called to do. Listen, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I will see you next Monday and I will see you March 4th for Sold Out Live. God bless you and I love you.